you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, this is Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Wow, my voice is cracking. What's going on there, man? My voice is cracking. Uh, you know, I just uh, I just can't hold it anymore. I'm going to have to give up my opera career, clearly, as it were. So there you go. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. We certainly appreciate you guys being here. As always, we have the most brilliant minds, the most amazing authors. And uh, when you listen to this show, you get a feeling that washes over you of brilliance and intelligence and just it's like manna from heaven of education intelligence from the sky and of course i'm hitting the the button twice accidentally there as i was doing the whole manna from heaven if you're watching this on youtube <laughs> people at home are, are listening on it i go what the fuck is going on um so anyway that's the most important reason you should listen to the show and always Further share your family, friends, and relatives. Go to goodreads.com for chess Chris Foss, youtube.com for chess Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com for chess Chris Foss, and TikTok. We're over there on TikTok trying to be cool as well. If you get a chance, go put a five star review on iTunes. We certainly appreciate the people that do that. Today, we have an amazing gentleman and prolific author on the show. His newest book, out of a whole mess of books that he's put out, and uh, he's got a huge following of people who just love his stuff. But this one's new, so you're going to be able to catch the first launch of this new character in this new series uh that he is putting out it's a new book coming out july 11th 2023 reed farrell coleman is on the show with us today his newest book series sleepless city a nick ryan novel is going to be coming out next month and uh, we're pretty excited to have him on the show he's excited as well from what i understand to be on the show i had to tell him to tap down his energy a little bit because he is just motivated like nobody's business reed is called a hard-boiled poet by npr's maureen corrigan and the noir poet but let me see if i can get this right noir poet laureate those are tough words there uh big words in the huffington post uh he is the new york times best-selling author of 31 novels including six in robert b parker's jesse stone series short stories poetries and essays didn't you know poetry is uh is plural it is now huh <laughs> what do they call it poetic license i just took poetics license anyway whatever man I, I flunked second grade in addition to his acclaimed series characters mo prager and gus murphy has written the standalone novel gun church and collaborated with decorated irish crime writer ken bruin on the novel tower uh he is a four-time edgar award nominee in three different categories best novel best paperback original and best short story he's also a four-time recipient of the seamus award for the best pie novel of the year pi P. P. I. novel okay there you go i can't i flunk second grade i can't spell <laughs> he also won the out uh, audi audi, audi McCavity, Barry, and Anthony Awards. This guy's won so many awards, I can't even pronounce half of them. That's how many awards he's got. Welcome to the show, Reed. How are you? Um, I'm good. After a beginning like that, you know, how how should I be? There <laughs> you go. Well, I hope you're good because uh, you did it. It's all under your belt. Uh, give us a .com so people can find you on the interwebs, please. Uh, ReedColeman.com, very simply. There you go. Now, you've written a lot of books. You've got a lot of different fingers in different book pies, as it were. Is are, are, Do they have book pies? I don't know. Maybe that sounds like something we should invent. Um, and you've got a few different series of characters. Uh, what motivated you want to start a new series, start a new character, and build on this new book you have, Sleepless City? Poverty. Poverty? <laughs> yeah. How much is your agent charging you? Don't answer. Oh, that. I... 
I, I, under the threat of death, I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> there you go. And probably contract. Uh, I just got an NDA notification from your attorney. Uh, so uh, tell us about this uh, new book. This uh, Give us a, like a 30,000 overview, if you would, please. Well, sure. Uh, why don't I just read it to you? <laughs> go ahead. Let's do it. We got time. No. Um, you know, uh, you mentioned some of my previous characters, Mo Prager and Gus Murphy. Mm -hmm. uh, I've written several series, and the, the characters I tended to have at the center of those series were stumblers, were people who were uniform cops but were never detectives. And when circumstance forced them to be detectives, they didn't have the requisite skills Mm -hmm. So they stumbled around a lot. They're good-hearted, well-intentioned, very determined guys, but they were, like me, a stumbler. Stumblers? Uh, that sounds like what I used to do when I used to drink. Well, I've done that as well. <laughs> um, so I was kicking around an idea for a new character. Stumbling or kicking around? Uh, I stumbled after I kicked it around. Oh, <laughs> in that order. Okay. So I was uh, kicking around an idea with my agent, whose name is Shane Salerno, who's a fairly famous screenwriter. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> we were talking, and I, you know, when the subject came up is, I, I'm tired of writing stumblers and, you know, characters I kick around. Um, and we were discussing it, and we came up with, wouldn't it be nice to write a character who's actually competent? Huh? Uh, actually more than competent. Uh, really skilled, competent, confident, uh, nothing like me, <laughs> in other words. Um, and I thought, well, that's really attractive to somebody who spent most of his career writing characters who are, you know, not incompetent, but they don't have the requisite skills to do what they're doing. Uh -huh. And so, I, you know, isn't this offensive to your prior characters, though? I mean, doesn't this hurt their feelings, maybe? <laughs> well, since they only exist in my head, oh. and, uh, you know, that uh, they might be offended, but I really don't care unless uh, they start paying me. Uh, that's how care. I feel about my personalities. So there you go. <laughs> so give us a rundown. Uh, tell us, you know, who this new uh, guy is. Give us a little more in depth. What adventure is he on as a protagonist? And uh, what sort of dude is he? You know, is he, what's his moxie, his character? Yeah. Well, uh, Nick, Nick has done two. He was a cop, and he did two tours in Afghanistan, and has mm. come back to New York City with a uh, let's just say a sharper notion of the difference between right and wrong. Mm. And his idea of right and wrong is a lot different than the uh, average guy or a woman's idea of right and wrong. Mm. And he sets out to uh, take care of somebody who is a known uh, child molester and oh, wow. uh, murderer, mm. but who has gotten off on a technicality. Mm. And so he, he decided this just needs doing. That's the kind of guy Nick is. Mm. And when he hatches the plot to do it, let's just say things, the tables are turned on him and he's offered a job, mm. an interesting job to be the prince of the city but to wow. work in the shadows. Oh. So that's sort of what Nick's gig is. Wow. Is it kind of like an equalizer gig or uh, something, some of that vengeance? Yeah. Or? He's part equalizer, part uh, Ray Donovan, mm -hmm. part uh, uh, Nate James Bond, part Jack Reacher. There you go. So what what drew you to start this new character? I mean, what, I mean we, we kind of talked about the... Uh, uh, we kind of talked about the setup of it, but the, what's what, what was your fascination with building out this new character and giving him the attributes that well, uh, I'm, he had? I know you've spoken to many authors, and one of mm -hmm. the things that authors that I mean, I know tons of authors, and one of the things we all enjoy is world building. Ah, yeah. And uh, the thing that I got to do with Nick is to build a world in which. Here's this really competent guy in a very mumbled, jumbled up world. And he's a guy who's going to set things right. Um, and it's a New York City. It's, it's, it's a New York City I know. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, 
you know, there's a kind of Kojak view of New York City or a television view of New York City. But if you know New York City at all, it is to know it's a thousand different places. Yeah. Um, and so Nick's world is both a world of the little guy and of the wealthy mm -hmm. uh, and everybody in between. So that was kind of the appeal of putting this type of character in that world. There you go. Now you've written a series of a lot of different books. One's I think up to 13. Do you, do you have a pretty good vision for turning this into a elongated series like some of your other books? Uh, well, as long as they keep giving me contracts for them, oh, there you go. I will keep writing. All about, them. It's all about money. Uh, right? But on a, on a less practical <laughs> point of view, yeah. uh, I could foresee this going on and on, but you know, I am not an outliner and mm -hmm. I do not write big overarching story arcs. Like, uh, my longest series is actually nine books Oh wow! from, from book to book. I didn't really know what was going to happen in the next book until I sat down and started writing the book. Ah, well, so this must have been fun though, because you're not stuck in, you know, some old model that you've built and you can kind of be like, Hey, let's build a, a new whole new world. Let's, uh, let's come up with some new things and you could kind of build that foundation out for what you're going to do in the future with this character. Well, that's the thing about world building in a novel or a series is mm -hmm. you, you find out that sometimes the world you built for your character can be self-limiting. Mm -hmm. This world that I've built with Nick in it is not at all self-limiting. In fact, he has freedom to do almost anything. Wow. Whereas previous characters i would have made some different choices if i had known when i started it what i knew at the end of it there you go there you go so uh you know there's a the byline from it when you're in trouble you call 911 when cops are in trouble they call nick ryan and uh I, what does that mean you want to expand on that a little or well, uh, we don't want to uh, give anything away i mean i you know like i said if you want i'll read the book <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we we just want to tease it so people yeah, no, can buy it. No. You know, get uh, tease as I kind of referred to before, is Nick is given the job of kind of being a prince of the city. Mm -hmm. He the things that get laid on his doorstep are not problems yet that the world knows about, but oh, only no. a very few people in the city know about. And it's his job to make sure that no one but those few people ever knew. Mm -hmm. that the problem existed there you so go it's kind of a fixer hi folks here's Foss here with a little station break hope you're enjoying the show so far we'll resume here in a second uh i'd like to invite you to come to my coaching speaking and training courses website you can also see our new podcast over there at chrisvossleadershipinstitute.com over there you can find all the different stuff that we do for speaking engagements if you'd like to hire me uh training courses that we offer and coaching for leadership management entrepreneurism uh podcasting corporate stuff uh with over 35 years of experience in business and running companies as ceo and be sure to check out chris Voss leadership institute.com now back to the show and the uh how did you make it so he could be like a legal fixer do you want to disclose that or should do we want uh, to how did I do that well one of the great things about fiction is uh -huh. you know i can make stuff up so yeah. uh no i i try actually to work within the framework of the law mm -hmm. um uh but we all know that people get away with stuff all the time within even we know that doesn't seem legal or that doesn't seem right but they get away with it and i won't bring up names and i won't bring up politics but uh you know it does know seem like that. it does seem like rich people who can hire more lawyers than most people can yeah they, they seem to get away with more stuff they I mean, do just across the board wall street I mean, you know everybody yeah it's just the way things are yeah um, it seems to be but the people who are Nick's bosses, who he, by the way, he doesn't know. No. Uh, they're kind of faceless, nameless people to him. Oh. Uh, he has a handler, and even the handler's name is in his real name. <laughs> so um, it's, it's, it's so trying to work within the framework of the law, but the people who he works for, mm -hmm. they are kind of the law. 
Ah. So that's how Nick gets away with what he does. And he's got safe houses all over the city. And oh. so it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, does it have a grittiness of New York City? Would you say to it? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, I, I don't think you can live even on Park Avenue and not realize New York City is a gritty place. Yeah. That's just by its very nature, New York is a gritty place. I, I'm sure you've been here. Uh, you walk down the street after eight o'clock at night and there's piles of garbage in front of the fanciest buildings in the city. Uh, there are rats the size yeah. of taxi cabs. It smells um, great when that's you know. when all the garbage. Oh, yeah. Uh, great. It smells great. It's, yeah. So, I mean, there's a grittiness that just comes with New York City. Yeah. Uh, and Nick's world can get pretty gritty, but one of the i think appealing aspects of the other appealing aspects of the book is nick has an old flame who lives on sutton place uh -huh. who, is, who was from a very wealthy family mm -hmm. and so nick operates like i said before in many different worlds and when he's offered this job they do say to him you know sometimes it will come in handy to have somebody who knows the difference between a salad fork and a dinner fork ah uh -huh. So it might be a little, uh, is there any uh, tuxedo James Bond wearing any, or is just uh, uh, maybe a little in book, society? Not in book one. Uh -huh. but, uh, uh -huh. Nick does drive, however, Nick does drive a very cool car. Ah, uh, there you go. He drives a 69 GTO, a black 69 oh, GTO. There you go. That'll yeah. get you around. That'll get you uh, places. And he also has a uh, classic 70s Norton motorcycle. All right. Damn. So, I mean, did you grow up in New York? Was uh, What was your history in, in uh, growing up? I grew up in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn. There you go. Yeah. And so did you find that, you know, your experience and knowledge and growing up in the city really helped you paint a better picture and descriptions in the book? I, I, you know, obviously, wherever you grow up leaves a kind of big impression on you negatively or positively uh, <laughs> where I grew <laughs> you know. So, and it's often mixed. Mm -hmm. um, and and growing up in Brooklyn in the 60s and 70s definitely had an effect on me. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I when I was 15 years old, I watched somebody die of a gunshot wound right in front Holy. of me. Holy yeah, crap. Oh, yeah, it was an experience that I, I will obviously will never forget. And it, I think it kind of helped shape my views of, of serious crime. Yeah. We call that Fridays around here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but you know, as a 15 year old kid, it, it made a huge impression on me. Yeah. I can imagine someone going that young and stuff. Uh, you know what I miss about New York? The pizza. What? The pizza. Oh, please. Do you know, I, the next time you're in New York, I'll take you on a pizza tour. I will hit you up on that. Seriously. No, I do. I take writer friend last summer. I took Lee child on a pizza tour. Uh, oh yeah 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 uh i take a whole and whenever writer friends come into the city if they want i take them on a pizza tour but of a pizza tour of my local sort of old neighborhood pizzerias not not the ones that get press uh you know or or famous yeah you're the locals you, you know the good ones yeah yeah you, you know the good ones you know uh we had john uh on the show for his book and uh he's got a couple bucks he promised that if i came out he would he would uh, show me around i don't i don't i don't put any money in that but you know what i mean <laughs> but we could uh, we could all bum around together and do a pizza tour oh right? absolutely pretty uh, sure he likes pizza. i love it i mean i i you know i'm what if people have asked me what my last meal would be and it's a choice between uh, a cowboy steak and a and the forest pizza yeah there you go so uh, what do you think of Chicago pizza? No, I'm just kidding. No, no, you can ask. I worked for Pizzeria Uno for 10 years. Oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and one of the, and I, I was one of their restaurant openers. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, so which one's better? Oh, please. Actually, <laughs> the, only, the only pizza I found that competes with Brooklyn pizza or New York pizza in general mm -hmm. is New Haven, Connecticut pizza. Really? Oh, it's amazing. New Haven, Connecticut, wow. It's amazing. Does it really come down to the water? Like they say that the bagels and stuff in New York are just better there because of the water. It has something to do with the water. Is that is that part of what it is? Or the only thing I'm an expert at is writing books. And there you, you go. Know, 
I, I thought know. you were an expert at eating pizza. Well, that I, I I'm prodigious at eating pizza. Uh, yeah, I think the bagels and pizza here are great, mm -hmm. but I it could be the water. It could be proximity to me. I yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a bagel place there that they're opening in L.A. and they're like literally shipping the New York water that they make the bagels with out to L.A. to to make the same sort of thing. So there you well, go. It's, I, I can tell you what, it, it'll taste better than the water. I I mean, I like the set Desert Southwest a lot, mm -hmm. but the water in the Desert Southwest, unless you like the taste of sulfur, <laughs> yeah. is uh, not wonderful. There you go. Well, you know, in, in I think in California, you get that sandy water beach, that beach sandy water salt. I don't know what that is. I'm yeah. just making stuff up. Anything more you want to tease out in the book before we go? Well, well, hold on. I mean, you're going to read it, but... There's the cover. Yeah. I promise yeah. not to read it, but there's the cover of it. Uh, no, I, 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 you know, I. it's always interesting. I mean, 32 books in, I've done this, you know, these sorts of things a lot. Mm -hmm. And and what I'm always wary of is giving too much away. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think if you like my other books, you'll love this book because... Mm -hmm. One of the challenges of a new series is how do you keep your authorial voice, mm -hmm. even though you're writing a different character or the difference between writing a series and a standalone is uh, one of the things I always am concerned about is, does it still have my voice? Yeah. And I've been told that, yes, people who've read my work, they recognize my authorial voice in this. There you go. Well, people love your voice. I mean, that's your, what your fan base really loves. You know, right? They love your writing and, and how you put things and, and all yeah, that great stuff. Uh, so. You know, I, I'm, at a loss to, <laughs> I'm at a loss to explain why, you know, people like what they like. And I, yeah. I've given up trying to, you know, I know a lot of authors who uh, they do like saber metrics on their books, you know, like mm -hmm. baseball. They uh -huh. They, they try to figure out what the audience wants, what they like in their book. I, I write for an audience of one. There you go. Me. And I hope, I hope if I like what's, what I'm writing, that they'll like what I'm writing. If I'm excited by what comes next, I hope they'll be excited by what comes next. There you because go. You don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're 30 plus books in. Uh, evidently, something's working. <laughs> yes either that or people are desperate for you know uh, a certain niche of books uh, well they they seem to love it i mean novelists do really well we interview a lot of novelists on the show and people love novels they love the suspension of reality i think because reality is kind of not that fun these days uh and uh you know they love they love heroes i think too yeah i'm you know this is funny is i'm not a big i'm not big on heroes uh -huh. I'm big on uh, uh, Nick, as my description of him, sounds very heroic, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but what I think when what readers will find when they read the book is that Nick has blind. What makes people interesting are their flaws. Yeah. Like, that's why I like you, Chris. <laughs> ah, I have a lot of flaws. You should see yeah. them. Yeah, ask too. any of my ex-girlfriends. Yeah. I, I mean, flaws are what make people interesting, right? Uh, that's why I don't find superhero movies very interesting. As, I don't as pretty either. as they are to look at. Yeah, I don't find them very interesting because their characters, you know, are either have only one flaw or no flaws at all. Nick yeah. has plenty. And the, the, you know, the CGI thing it tunes me out a little bit. You know, I mean, I I, I get people who like the comic book uh, Marvel series and all that stuff, but to me, I like grittiness. You know, like. Uh, what are some old good New York movies from oh, uh, the French connection, the French connection. My God, what the a Godfather. Great... I was God. so upset when, uh, who is the, the Godfather course? Uh, who is the, who great act Gene Hackman in, in he's, that he's still so alive. Gene. I was so upset when he retired. Yeah. He, and, he, uh, I think he lives in Santa Fe or, or a Taos. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he yeah. wrote mystery novels for a while, actually. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Oh. You know, one of my favorite movies is uh, it's the one it's the early one with Robert De Niro. Uh it's Martin Scorsese's early one. M mean Streets. Mean Streets. That's a real raw sort of yeah. New York. Well, movie. Scorsese talk about somebody who was very affected by where he grew up in New York. Oh yeah. 
yeah, you know, there's Martin Scorsese is was deeply affected yeah. by where he grew up. And taxi um, driver too. Yeah. yeah tell the, I mean, there are gritty when you think of gritty movies, you immediately think, you know, New York or London. Yeah. Actually, for for gritty movies. Um, yeah. uh, pretty movies you think LA. Yeah, that's true, huh? It's, it's pretty, but you know, there, there's something about the grit of a movie. There's something that gives it that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The grit, basically. Yeah. A the texture, je ne sais quoi. A texture is je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't even say uh, that. But yeah, the, the texture that that makes it and it gives it that feel, especially you know, like on film or when you read about it. It it just it just makes you it it, it livens. It's an accent that livens up the the uh, environment. Well, and, the real test for a gritty movie or a gritty novel mm -hmm. is the, the ability to transport the, the viewer or the reader. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I find amazing about reading mm -hmm. is, you know, look, it's a book. Is there anything more artificial than, you know, you're holding this in your hand? When, you know, at least when you're watching something on television yeah. or a movie, it's washing over you. You're, you're not really participating. But mm -hmm. in a book... You're holding this thing in your hand, whether it's a Kindle or a book or whatever, and yet you're completely transported if the writing is good. Yeah. You know what they should do is add smell a vision to books where uh, <laughs> you can smell the, uh, you get that beautiful spring, summer uh, urine garbage smell. Oh. And the outside of it kind of feels like a trash can. Maybe. Well, now, now, now Manhattan smells of marijuana. Oh, does it really? Oh, it's incredible. Better than urine, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, better be beats urine and auto fumes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the smells of my youth, yes. Are you guys you guys legal there in New York now, aren't you? It is. Yeah. Well, it isn't is. it legal nationwide? Come on, man. There you go. Well, it's been wonderful to have you on, Reed. Thank you very much for coming on. Well, Chris, thanks for having me. Um, thanks for coming. I, I thought this was just the warm up, man. <laughs> we're just warming up. I mean, we can yeah. sit here. We're eventually we're gonna run out of things to do, and you will have to read the book. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, the one Chris, thing about novels. We can't get into the middle and the ending. I mean, you're welcome to tell me the ending if you want, but uh it might ruin things. Yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> uh, I'll just quickly I once did a uh new authors are very dangerous, like first time authors. Uh huh. Uh because they, when you, you ask a question like, give us a little sample of the book or give us a bill, they want to tell you the whole book. Yeah. And, and I once did a, an appearance with a guy who had his one, his one novel out, and I had to grab the microphone out of his <laughs> hand and say, you do want them to buy the book. You want them to buy the book or you got to tease it out. Yeah. You want the but you can't tell the ending and stuff like that and and of course I think in this book the he gets taken away by aliens right is that the ending? No, Shh, come on, that. you promised. That's not the ending, folks. I made it up. Anyway, <laughs> aliens. Uh, so there, because we all know they live in New York too. I think they're in the Trump Tower. Or something. Oh, I don't know. My, my neighbors. Uh, your neighbors back in brooklyn yeah <laughs> there you go there you go well continue success in this new book uh give us a dot com wherever you want people to find you on the interwebs okay well i'm on facebook i'm on twitter but best place to find me is uh hiding in my bomb shelter in the back of my uh no read coleman.com uh r-e-e-d-c-o-l-e-m-a-n.com there you go thanks for coming on we really appreciate it well, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun, and hope I get to come back. I would love to have you come back. Come back for all your books. We've had all the uh, all the Jack Ryan people on, and the, uh, all the different variations. I mean, it's it's crazy. So we we've got some of the people like the Tom Clancy people. They just come on every two months with whatever the different. Yeah, I know are. a lot. I, you know, I like know Mark Rainey. Uh, we've had Mark on a couple times. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, uh, and the pizza tour offer is real. I will hold so, you to that. I this yeah. is a binding contract according to the thing. And uh and then uh what's his name? Katzman Titus uh he offered something similar. So we'll just we'll just call it a party. We'll just get in a just get in a, a, a convertible and just get drunk and smash yeah. and eat and, and drive stumble. around. Stumble, and stumble around yeah. New York City. Yeah. Sounds like a great way to get mugged. Um so there you go folks. Order up where refined books are sold, but remember stay at those alleyway bookstores because you might get bit by a rat and need some tetanus shots and rabies <laughs> shots. Uh order up where refined books are sold. Sleepless City, a Nick Ryan novel will be uh, available for purchase July 11, 2023 and if you order it now, 
be the first one on your block or your book club to see you read it. Uh, also, watch, we've got another great novice come on the show. You may have heard of him, CNN's Jake Topper will be on the show with us in July or August. So check that out as well. Uh, also, be good to your friends, neighbors, relatives. Tell them to go to goodreads.com, for just Chris Voss, YouTube.com, for just Chris Voss, LinkedIn.com, for just Chris Voss, and TikTok. We're trying to be cool over there. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. We'll see you guys next time. And that should have us out.